You've received your float plane rating and have learned all the basics required to take off and land on the water and make it to and from the dock safely. So where do you go from there? Well, it's important to stay current and fly as much as possible in as many conditions as you can to build your experience and capabilities. But beyond the flight basics, there are also other issues that are important to float operation, and they begin before you even start the engine. Although pre-flighting a float plane is similar to a land plane, there are important elements that require special attention. Before every flight, visually inspect the floats for any signs of damage or leaking. Get to know where your floats normally sit when they're free of water. If the aircraft sits differently on the water, you should investigate. It could be a loose rivet or it could be a gash in the bottom as a result of hitting a submerged object while taxiing the last time. Just like draining your fuel to check for water before each day's flying, pump the water out of your floats each day as well. It only takes one compartment half filled to add more than 100 pounds on this Cessna 185, or to put it a different way, may increase your weight to overgross without you even knowing it. Experienced float plane pilots know if your floats aren't leaking today, it doesn't mean they won't tomorrow. Water spray can cause erosion of the propeller, almost like sandblasting, so the leading edge of the propeller should be checked for nicks. Spray damage can accumulate quickly, so have large nicks filed out and the propeller dressed often. To reduce damage, taxi slowly or on the step and avoid prolonged medium taxiing where prop damage usually occurs. Because every takeoff and landing on floats will be like from an unprepared field, an inspection of the landing gear is critical. Water rudders and struts, bracing wires, cables and fittings all require a detailed examination. A float plane undergoes significantly more abuse on takeoff and landing than a land plane. The force from every wave transfers through the floats and struts to the airframe, and if something can wiggle or rattle free, it will. Many float plane accidents happen on takeoff or landing, and when they do, they're abrupt and dramatic, with the aircraft generally ending up inverted. So let's talk about cabin preparedness. Flying baggage, toolboxes, anchors and axes can all become potential killers during a crash. And mooring lines can unfurl into an impenetrable web, trapping you and your passengers inside the overturned aircraft. So it's critically important to ensure that everything in the cabin is stored and secured. As part of your pre-flight inspection, consider everything on board that could create an obstacle to safely evacuating the aircraft, such as headset, GPS or portable radio cords. Carrying passengers comes with serious responsibilities and a complete passenger briefing is critical. Let's start with weight and balance. Don't hesitate to ask your passengers how much they weigh to ensure you're within your aircraft's limits. Flying over gross is dangerous from a performance standpoint and will also invalidate your insurance in the event of an accident. Brief your passengers about the danger of unguarded propellers, stressing that a whirling propeller's danger lies in its invisibility. Under most circumstances, passengers should not be permitted out of the cabin while the propeller is turning and under no circumstances forward of the wing struts when the engine is running. If you're using recreational style inflatable life jackets, they must be manually inflatable. The automatic inflating ones, which are not legal to use in an airplane, inflate when they hit the water. So as the cabin fills with water, you'll be pulled to the highest point inside. Passengers should know where to find their life jacket and how to put it on. If it's an inflatable life jacket, they should know how to inflate it and they must never inflate it while in the aircraft. Float planes have a high center of gravity and in a water accident tend to come to rest inverted. The key to survival after an upset is to remain aware of where the nearest exit is located and how to get out of the aircraft and to the surface as efficiently as possible. With this in mind, you must provide passengers with a thorough review of what they might expect if the aircraft suddenly upsets during takeoff or landing. Explain that if the aircraft does become inverted, there will be lots happening. Water will rush into the cabin and it will become confusing and disorienting. First, they need to understand where they will leave the aircraft. Show them how to locate the exit door in relation to their left or right knee and explain that if this door is on their right side while upright, it will also be on their right side even if the float plane comes to rest in another position. Then give them some time to become familiar with how to open their exit door. Explain that they should open their exit door first and ensure they have a firm object to hold on to before they release their seatbelt. Have them practice finding and releasing the latch of their shoulder harness with their eyes closed. The main message to get across to your passengers is that their foremost thought should be to get out of the aircraft. 
but there are important steps involved and a proper briefing requires more than just telling them. Take time and let them practice what you've told them to do. Flow plane upsets don't happen often, but they do happen. And when they do, having some familiarity with what to do and hands-on experience in doing it can make a critical difference when it comes to survival.